it folks, JD here. And firstly, before I get into anything else, whoever it was that sent me this, thank you very much. Let me know who you are so I can thank you properly. But uh, it arrived in the post. There was no note with it, nothing at all, just quite literally just the t-shirt. Uh, it's fantastic, absolutely beautiful. The colours bang on, absolutely fantastic. Thank you ever so much. Uh, so today, folks, we're going to be taking up the Parrot Disco. Now, this is a, is a large fixed wing plane, uh, quite essentially without the wings, this is what it looks like. So we have, underneath the hood, we have the parrot chuck for automated flight, stabilisation, GPS control, everything else that comes from here. If you want to see the full list, I did read it all out in the unboxing. Uh, we've got the battery just under here which connects in with this XT60 connector. It's, we're looking at 45 minutes of flight up to, so what I'm going to do, because that's going to be quite a long video, I'm probably going to split this up into two, maybe three videos, uh, just so that they're in nice, easy, manageable chunks for your commute or anything like that. Uh, so what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to stop waffling, we're going to get this all set up, and we're going to take it directly up and see exactly how she does. Alright then folks, so... Please join me on this journey. All right then, so what we're gonna do first, I'm not gonna attach that battery for the second because I'm going to be playing around with these wings and that servo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line up these wings, push them in, and then before I push them all the way home, just line up the servo at the back here, just so that, there we are, that all fits in nice. It all goes in with a very definite click. That's good, I like things that are definite, especially things which are as, there we go, which are as intelligent as this. That's what we're left with. Absolute monster of a plane. Beautiful, beautiful looking design. Incredible looking uh, fixed wing. Absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that down. Now, I'm going to plug this battery in, and then I'm going to turn this on. So... I've done quite a few tests with this in the house, not flight tests, uh, <laughs> uh, but a few actual tests just to see exactly how it goes, how it turns on, how it all connects to um, to, the, to your smartphone and everything else. And I've got to be honest and say that it, right at the very beginning, it was a bit of a nightmare to set up. Um, I spent perhaps 40 minutes to 45 minutes updating it. Um, I'd imagine it came from the factory without any updates, and I would imagine there were quite a few that needed to be done. So <laughs> I think there were two updates needed, and then there were two updates directly for the um, transmitter as well. So I'm going to turn on this transmitter. While I'm, the transmitter is turning on, I, there we are, we've connected to the Wi-Fi. Parrot Free Flight Pro was just about to initialise then. Now the cable at the side, this cable at the side is very very important because if you don't have this cable set up you're not going to get a proper connection. Now I did try it and it did flicker now, now and again on to, ha to have a proper connection and then it disconnected. So rather than just leave it and hope for the best, I'm not going to be hoping for the best with this. We're going to do, do this 100%, we're going to do this properly first time and that is we need a proper cable. Now I've tried a couple of compatible iPhone cables, they didn't work so I've actually gone for the actual iPhone cable that I had with it and turned out that it actually worked pretty good uh, to the point where I think it's actually far better uh, to use the original one than not. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to calibrate it. So if I click on calibration, now this is going to be a little bit of a nightmare with these wings on but if I just click calibrate, come on. Maybe I click back, click calibration again. Oh, it seems to be calibrated. It seems to not want to. I did calibrate it earlier. Okay, one thing I haven't done is flat trim. So if I click flat trim. Put your drone on a flat surface and press the button of the white line should be parallel with the horizon. Oh, it doesn't seem as if it's connected. It seems as if it's disconnected. It has, it says not, not connected. Okay, connect. That's a little bit worrying before we start our flight. You definitely are connected, sir. Okay, connect. No. Connect. Now I've lost the controller. Controller still says green, though. Let's turn off Wi-Fi, turn it back on. 
Okay, now it says it's definitely connected. Now we should connect. Come on, seriously, mate? Right, okay, what I'm going to do, I had this in the house as well. Quit the app, go back into the app, and usually that sorts it all out. Apart from when I say usually that sorts it all out, and it hasn't actually done anything. <laughs> yeah, not connected. And it's this that really et up into my time yesterday and I was thinking that hopefully if I connected it all in the house I would then go through it and tell you exactly how difficult it all was to connect but actually it would have worked so what I'm going to do if it hasn't worked this time I'm going to just go for what I did in the house which is turn everything else off it seems to have worked there we go it has connected everything's connected right let's put this down let's click calibration Let's calibrate it. So, pivot tube first. So hold it up against the floor until the green tick is done. Then it shows you the next move, which is to spin this around, which is easier said than done with these massive wings on it. And then calibrate this way, <laughs> calibrate that way. And it should, there we are, we're all done. We're all calibrated, we're all good to go. Um, and let's see if we can do flat trim. So let me see if I can just move this around a little bit until the horizon is flat and level and then click calibrate. And then we should, we should be good. Probably because it's still moving, it's not able to calibrate. That's the thing with all these larger drones is that they do take quite a bit of setting up, quite a bit of doing so what I'm going to do I'm just going to help this on its way a little bit and just pop my bag underneath it and try and see if I can move this around a bit so that it eventually ends up as level as possible There we go Put your drone flash service, press a button, the whole line should be parallel with the horizon, which is exactly what we've got. Okay, if I go back out of that. Okay, it doesn't just seem to want to do anything. As soon as you click calibrate, it just highlights calibrate and that's it. But it, doesn't, it isn't alerting for us actually needing to calibrate that. There is also one other thing I did, and when you first set this up, you have to set up the transmitter as well, which is by moving it in a load of different a different motions in order to set it up. Now I did that a little while a little while ago and everything seemed to be fine. This all seems to be good. We're getting a green light to go. GPS is green. Smart. Uh, GPS of the disco is green. GPS of the transmitter is green. Both battery lights are 100%. Wi-Fi signal is 100%. So we seem to be good. Now, what's that? Okay, so we need to line up the green and the blue in the middle there. So it's saying that it's optimum place to take off is this way. Right, okay, so if I pick this up, and then, now I'm gonna be totally honest, this bit has always seemed like the most trickiest to me. So, you press one to turn it on, and then, <laughs> and then you throw it, and it just goes. It's going up to his 60 meters, then it's going to automatically go into autopilot, which is what it's done here. Oh, I'll be honest, that was a bit of a jaw dropping moment for me then, taking it up that high and then doing that because it did seem awful lot like it was just going to uh, carry on going. Right, okay folks, so once it's up to its 60 meters, then it should be okay. There we are, it seems to be stabilizing a bit. It seems to be moving around a little bit. Once you then want to take control of it, then it's quite simple. All you do is you then just move the stick in whichever way you need to move it. And you're flying it now. 
and that's it I've got full control of this now right let's take her out a little bit and let's see what she's like oh this feels good this feels good I'll be honest it's a little bit <laughs> it is a little bit a little bit nerve-wracking but it's just it's this is like something else it's as easy to control as the parrot swing most definitely there is no issues there whatsoever with controlling it it is as easy to control as the parrot swing it is as easy to control as any other smaller quadcopter that you've ever flown and I, yes I mean quadcopter I don't mean plane I mean quadcopter this is probably the easiest thing to control but at the same time I would say that you do have to take care because this is such a large such a large plane now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to keep the green and the blue radars together it is really nice as it's up at quite a high altitude as well you can alter that just by bringing it down Oop. just by bringing it down moving it around a bit and bring it down to whatever level you want to now I I personally think that this field I've got here is a little bit too small for it by the look of it it certainly is if anything I would say you need a slightly larger place to fly this because it certainly seems that it needs it because it covers ground so quickly now it's up there it's holding it at speed and its speed is driven by however much resistance it gets against it so it has wind resistance it has environmental factors and all that and all of that comes together and it maintains its speed at quite a nice level and it's lovely I've got full control I can see it through line of sight I can look up and there it is I can see it through the FPV screen of my transmitter of my smartphone and there it is all in all it seems lovely it seems great we got 96% battery I'm not used to that I'll be honest every now and again I am having a little Wi-Fi signal pop up and all I'm doing there is I'm just turning my transmitter around a bit just so that I can I can properly get the main uh, as much signal as I pros possibly can through to this this device now this is lovely this really is nice so we're at a cruising altitude at 61 meters which is about 122 foot and we're going at 16 meters per second uh, for the second and it looks lovely it's not when it's up it's not that loud but when you go to start the motors and you fling it up into the air that's a hell of a lot of resistance against your hand a hell of a lot of resistance against your hand it is quite incredible to think that you've got that much power pushing against you and it really took me by surprise I don't know if you noticed but it really took me by surprise I did not expect that uh, at all but um, yeah it is really really nice and yeah all in all I'm taken I, <laughs> I am how can you not be how can you not be it is absolutely lovely it flies terrific it banks so so easily you have your nice little horizon meter there as well so you can see exactly how quick you're going you can alter your speed by pushing the left throttle and it climbs speed which is what I'm doing every now and again I don't know if you're noticing this little speed meter every now and again it's dropping in speed then it's increasing in speed it's dropping in speed then increasing in speed and it's just because I am just flying it right let's bring that down a bit that seems a little bit too high to me And it's really quite cool when you when you drop it down when you drop it down in, in in altitude as well you can hear 
that motor cutting out a little bit which is a little bit perturbing I'll be honest it's a little bit it is indeed a little bit perturbing just simply because you can see it you can hear it and then all of a sudden you can see it but you can't hear it <laughs> Now I can honestly say that the whole thing is working remarkably well, absolutely is, absolutely is and what's more is it's holding its altitude incredibly well at 54 meters which I think if memory serves is just under 100 foot and it's holding that altitude and it's incredibly, incredibly solid. And it is really, really, really nice. Really nice. And it just feels terrific. It really does. It feels absolutely terrific. And it, it covers ground quick as well though, so you've got to be careful. You've got to know your surroundings because this thing really does cover quick. Right. And she circles easy. She increases altitude easy. It's as easy, if you've flown the parrot swing, it is as easy as flying the parrot swing, but quite literally a fixed wing. Absolutely. And it is, it is fantastic. It really is fantastic. And just keeping those radars, the blue and the green together as much as I possibly can, because that's when it's just optimal, optimal signal. Oh, I'm sure when she does increase altitude, she does scream. Those motor kicks in, she really does shout at you. So that's why I think you need a much larger area than what I've got here. I honestly thought that this area would be good for it um, because it's nice and large, it's nice and big, it's, it is nicely wooded. It's not, that, it's not populated, but honestly, I honestly think this is a bit too small for it. Right, now what I'm going to do is bring her around a little bit. I'm going to try to land her. Now she's going to be a little bit difficult here. So I'm going to bring her in for quite a, quite a tight corner. And I'm going to bring her down. And I'm going to bring her down. And I'm going to bring her down and drop her. And then... Angle her and then land her. Linear landing and that's it, she coasts and she stops. As easy as that, but you do need to have a, lot, a large place to land her, you really do. If you click the linear landing button, which is what I just did, then she'll land for you without any problems whatsoever. If you try to bring her down, then you need a long area, a large area to bring her down so that you can literally bring her down nice and safely. Now let's just go and retrieve and retrieve her. And the great thing about grass is it's nice and light. All right then folks, that is test one of the Parrot Disco. So after that quite harsh landing, what have we got? We've got nothing. No signs of damage, no marks. That's just a mark in the EPP. Everything else looks to be good. Everything else looks to be nice and secure. Those wings are still on securely, they haven't popped out. So what I would say is from landing this, you need to have 
a lot of room to fly you need to have a lot of room to land so what I would recommend is in fact when you go to take off you take off you take her up you let her go into manual into into autopilot from that point then when you go then to take off again or when you go sorry once you once you want to take her out of 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 autopilot and just have her circling around then what you can do is quite simply you can just move the throttle move the left thumbstick she will come out of autopilot and move herself around but when you come to land her, that's the thing. I had to take her out a little way to bring her back in, to move her, to bring her in. I should have hit linear landing round about in the middle there, because then it would have swooped up, cut the motors out, swooped down and landed sort of here. Uh, but as it was, I wanted to try and see if I could land her manually. I couldn't land her manually. Every time I was pulling down, or actually pushing up to bring the nose down, she just wasn't having it. I think because the optical flow sensor on the bottom saw that there was something below her and wasn't going to land. Um, that's what I'm guessing anyway. Possibly that's not it but that's what I'm going to guess and then eventually when she came straight back down and she hit the deck that's when I thought to myself right fine that's when I should when I brought her about halfway sorry that's when I hit linear landing that's when she hit the deck and that's when yeah she landed without any problems and everything's fine I like this as well this is a really good feature after flying her these little propellers just move in like that and that is awesome so that when you land you're not going to keep on uh, get you're not going to keep on breaking propellers you're just going to have one set and they should last you a while you do get a second set with them anyway just in case you need them but uh, all in all that that was fun so i think what i'm going to do folks i'm going to call that there for video one i'm going to make another video now and that'll be up in a little while uh thanks ever so much for watching listening i hope you've enjoyed i'm being jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel. Channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.